Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer, thank you for your service and for being here today. In 2021, the United States Military Academy, West Point, taught cadets critical race theory through a seminar titled, Understanding Whiteness and White Rage. At an Armed Services Committee hearing earlier this year, or, or last year, former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, was questioned about teaching critical race theory at the service academies. General Milley defended the practice, saying he thought it was important for those in uniform to be, quote, open-minded and openly read, end quote. He went on to state, quote, I want to understand white rage, and I'm, and I'm white, end quote. In your experience as a squadron commander with the U.S. Space Force, would learning about whiteness and white rage help promote unit cohesion or a team-centered culture? Uh, the answer is anyone who's focused on war fighting doesn't naturally think to talk about these things in the, in the military workplace. We're focused on a particular mission in defense of the country to deter conflict and to win our nation's wars. I do want to make one additional point, if I may, uh, that the general has just explained that he never saw critical race theory in his time at West Point or in his lengthy honorable military career. In doing research for my book that got me fired, I found that West Point cadets who had recently graduated, these are impressive people, black, white, clearly leftist in their political worldview, had produced a 40-page policy proposal, is what it was called, that I consider a communist screed, anti-American, race-baiting, accusing leaders at West Point of failing the American people, criticizing West Point as an institution for racism, criticizing them for failing the Army, and that they would continue to fail the Army what I found in that document is that this general's work is quoted throughout the entire 40 pages. So you can't say that you've never been exposed to critical race theory when a bunch of left-wing Marxist-leaning students attack the West Point Military Academy relying on your work. And so I'd be, I'd be curious to find out if they consulted with him in the production of that 40-page policy proposal to topple, topple statues at West Point, to rename buildings, when that kind of invitation came to me as a commander to rename streets and buildings, everyone at the base was allowed to populate the Excel spreadsheet that came to us as a tasker from the Pentagon. And I saw George Washington's name on that list because ideology that poisons the mind doesn't disambiguate between racists, evil men, and good men, and I patriots. What, what they did is they said, he is a founder, he's white, I hate him, and we'd like to remove his name from buildings and streets. This is the kind of thing that ideology does to the military. It divides people. And the best evidence we've seen so far, excuse me, 10 more seconds, is the recent testimony from president, university presidents who tried to excuse and contextualize genocidal rhetoric. And, and what CRT, diversity, equity, and inclusion mandates, and Marxist ideology do to a university president or to the Chinese PLA, they will do to an American service member. And I've seen it firsthand. Thank you. I think it would be wise for the committee to follow up on the uh, report that you're talking about. Um, so I, I hope we'll be able to do that. According to the Department of Defense website, its mission is to, quote, provide the military forces needed to deter war and ensure our nation's security, end quote. Do you think that teaching our future military leaders about whiteness and white rage will better prepare them to deter war and defend our nation? No, I do not. And do you believe promoting divisive concepts, you've, I think, indicated this, like critical race theory, have an impact on military recruitment and retention? Well, I've got uh, some, some polling data here that if we have time, I can site, but uh, this is one of the prevalent themes that shows up among active duty service members who have been polled about their concerns about the direction the military is headed, why they're choosing to leave the service, and young Americans, why they're choosing not to join. They sometimes call it wokeness, that's colloquial, but they specifically, if they know what they're talking about, refer to critical race theory, and if you know what you're talking about, you know that it's rooted in Marxist ideology. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to enter to the record any um, document that Mr. Lohmeyer has, such as that survey um, in, in the um, minutes of this hearing. I, yeah, and, I can, I'm sorry. You didn't ask me to speak. No, well, I'm just gonna ask one more question. 
Um, are there specific recommendations you have for maintaining a strong and cohesive military culture while addressing concerns about ideological influences? Yes, ma'am. I think every American citizen, veteran, or having never served, looks to the Congress to use the power of the purse to hold our military accountable. But we also need brave men and women in uniform to respectfully give feedback, use their voice, and stand on their principle. We don't all have to agree, but we do have to agree that the mission of the United States military is paramount. And merit-based selection and promotion is the only effective principle to keep a strong military. I don't care what people's views are on diversity, equity, and inclusion. I really don't. But we can't use our individual political or social or cultural worldview to shape military selection processes of all institutions. The long-trusted U.S. military must remain a merit-based system. Otherwise, you'll lose that system. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Goldman. Thank you, Mr.